All right, guys. So we just got done eating sea pot. What you uh, what do you think of sea pot? Oh, I love it so much. The quality is amazing. Yeah, quality is pretty top notch, guys. Mm -hmm. We went. We got there around 11:45. Um, normally, lunch is pretty packed in here, but for some reason today. We made it just in time yeah. to get a table right away. Because when we were leaving, there were people waiting for tables, so yeah. we lucked out. Yeah, quality of meat, super good. Mm -hmm. We ordered three rounds. So the first round, we had the beef toro mm -hmm. and the ribeye. That's right. Second round, we had the brisket, beef brisket and ribeye. And then our last round, we had the beef toro again and the ribeye again. The ribeye, not like... Number one. Number it's one. I think number two was beef toro. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't try any of the pork just because... I get nervous. She gets nervous, but also like beef is just so quick to cook. It is. They have a really nice sauce bar, which also tells you... <laughs> which also tells you like how to make a sauce. Mm -hmm. Like if you want more savory, you want more sweet, spicy, gives you like recommendations of what to put in it to make that flavor. I think what makes Sea Pot stand out from all the other hot pot places that we've been to so far is that the the broth actually like gets soaked into the meat. Yeah. Um, the broth has so much flavor, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the meat soaks it all up too. And I think that's one of the biggest problems with hot pot is when that stuff doesn't get soaked up into your, you know, the meat that you're eating. Yeah. Like it's barely there. Well, I feel like at a lot of other hot pots, the broth all, I mean, obviously they all have kind of like that same base, but I feel like there's not a whole lot to make that flavor really stand out. Whereas this one, each one has a very distinct and different flavor. Yeah. So that's one thing we really like. Um, we are both miserably full. Yeah, we're both miserably full right now. I would also say their broth choices, there's a lot, there's, there's a ton. There's a ton. Usually they have like three or four. This one has like six or seven. Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. And so this time I chose the kimchi broth, which was really, was really sweet. Yummy. it was really yummy. I got spicy miso, which it had a nice bite. It wasn't super spicy, but it was still pretty good. good that flavor. one has great flavor too. Mm -hmm. um, and then one thing that it's either hit or miss for hot pot places, and it breaks my heart every time when they don't have it, but this one has quail eggs. I had nine. I regret my decisions. Yeah. <laughs> Nine quail eggs. I'm full. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what it was like. But so you know, dumplings are dumplings. But because the the broth like is so, I guess I, I don't want to use the word potent, but because the broth is so good, flavorful, and flavorful, the dumpling like soaks that up too, yes. and then you know, putting your dipping sauce. Oh, it was all those bold. dumplings are not good. <laughs> We're both like. Grab me another plate. Grab yeah, me another plate. <laughs> Go ahead and get one more plate. <laughs> All right. I think the biggest complaint though, they don't have enough veggies going around on the conveyor belt. They yeah. have a bunch of other side dishes, but you know, it's like two plates of spinach, two plates of cabbage, cabbage, two plates of cilantro. They don't have bok choy. They did last time. They didn't have it today, which I was very sad about. They don't have I love bok, bok choy. choy. The broccoli was only, it was either like two really small pieces on a plate or one big chunky one and I'm like, mm. And so the pro the problem isn't the amount of it, the problem is that the amount of plates. Because you're going through several tables by the time it may get to you, um, if you're in the middle or towards the end of the line, conveyor belt line. Yeah. And so... Because we were by, towards the end. Yeah, we're, we're towards the end. So by the time it came to us, a lot of that stuff was gone. Yeah, we had to wait like four four cycles before he finally got a plate of cabbage yeah so there's that mm -hmm. but yeah. other than that there's really not a whole lot of complaints with this place yeah love it love it love it love it mm -hmm. um oh pff, another complaint <laughs> we were just talking about it we're like we wish they had like a dessert option <laughs> yeah because like some places have a little bit of ice cream or something i mean they had fruit but i don't want ice cream you know you're drinking you're eating a hot pot you want something really cold yeah, like they have fruit, which is fine, but like, give me something sweet, a little, a little cheesecake or something, ice cream. Yeah. But you are paying a, a I don't want to say a premium here, but you're paying pretty much a premium. It is cheaper than other places though. It's $32. And it's not- After, after tax, it was 64 something. So maybe even less than $32. It was like 30 bucks a person. Yeah. And there's no time limit here, which is- rare a lot of hot pot and korean barbecue you have like 90 minutes we we looked up and down that menu there's no time limit 
Yeah. So, Seapot, you're awesome. Mm -hmm. We will definitely be coming back. So if you're in Plano, Texas, I don't know where other locations are, but there, it's off. It's in Plano, Texas, off 75 Highway. Go check it out. It's popping. We'll catch you in the next cozy experience. Peace.